Because Job, in, in just a short period of time, has lost his family, he's lost his possessions, he's lost his health. And everybody around him is saying, why don't you just go ahead and curse God and let him kill you and just be done with this? And then his three friends are trying to give him advice. But look, when somebody is in, is in the pits of agony, really all you need to do is say, I'm so sorry. Can I pray for you? I, I love you. I want to mourn with you. But usually we want to we fix, especially if we're men. Wives, we're sorry. Can you tell us something we think you mean for us to do something? And you do. You mean for us to sit there and listen. But sometimes we don't want to listen. We just want to go fix it. And that's... that's. So Job's friends, obviously men and men, because they wanted to fix Job's problems. One of them in Job 11, 7, he is smart enough to say this. Can you fathom the mysteries of God? Can you probe the limits of the Almighty? So God is infinite. It's limitless. There are no limits to him. But what I like is when you go all the way to chapter 38 and 39 of Job, you find out what God says about himself, not what some well-meaning friend thinks. And I think the well-meaning friend was right in this particular aspect. But in 38 and 39, there's a few things that God says about himself in the form of a question. Hey, Job, oh, were you there when I laid the foundations of the earth? I don't remember you being there. I, I, I don't remember. I'd look over and go, hey, Job. What, what measurement should I use here? Have you, have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place? See, God does that. Hey, cue the morning. Cue the sun. Um, so I don't remember. Were you there that day? I, uh, no, I was. Have you comprehended the vast expanses of the earth? Uh, I'm... I'm pretty, when I was cleaning out my office and I had all that stuff pulled out into the prayer room, and I walked in yesterday afternoon with Julia and, hey, honey, we got to get all this stuff back in my office. I had a hard time comprehending that, and that was just my office. But God comprehends the earth. And we know that that's way, way down to things smaller than we can see with the eye, so way, way bigger than things that we can comprehend with the mind. And so God is infinite. God is also eternal. In Psalm 90, verse 2, Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Before the mountains were born, you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. 1 Timothy 1, 17. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. That word eternal, it means unbroken age. The biggest number of all is the number eight, as long as you turn it on its side. And then it becomes infinity. God is the unbroken age. He's immortal, which means he's uncorruptible and uncorrupted. Immortal, he cannot be corrupted. He is invisible, obviously can't be seen, and the only God be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And then he is unchangeable in his being. James 1, uh, verse 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting Sabbath shadow. He doesn't change at all. In Exodus 3, 14, this is what God said to Moses. When you go to the people, tell them this. I am who I am. This is what you're to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me. Well, who should I tell them who sent me? I am. That's my name. That's my nickname. <laughs> I, I am. Just tell them the I am. Um, God is wisdom and power. These are the unchangeable things that happen to be God. Psalm 147, 5. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. This literally means the limit of his understanding doesn't exist. Think about that. The limit of his understanding, that number doesn't exist. That's, again, my, my mind is hurting a little bit. His understanding has no limits. Did anybody here, you have an 
understanding limit patients, especially when you're dealing with a family member. I don't understand why you do that. God never looks at you and goes, I don't understand why you do that. He knows. Holiness. Revelations 4, verses 8 through 1. After this I looked, and there, uh, there before me was a door standing open in heaven, and the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must, takes place, must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and there before me was a throne in the heaven with someone sitting on it. Now this is John. He's, he's having a vision. It is what, what we see in the book of Revelation. On, and the one who <clears throat> sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby. A rainbow that shone like an emerald encircled the throne. <clears throat> Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones, and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumbles and pearls of thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These were the seven spirits of God. Also in front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. Now I want to say something. John, awesome man of God, the one who was beloved by God. This is not John the Baptist. This is John the Apostle who Jesus loved. He still had to communicate what he saw in the language he had. If I ask one of you to go out and, and look at something that's just incredible, you can only explain it to me in the language that you have. You can only say, man, it's just like, uh, I remember as a kid, we went to um, uh, Kennedy Space Center uh, there in Florida. And the building that they assembled the rockets in, if you stand and you look straight up, eventually you will fall over. It is, I mean, it's the in Florida, we don't have many tall buildings, okay? So any, any building over two stories high is tall to us, but, but, but you literally would fall over. Now, how do I explain that to somebody who'd never seen it? Well, you know, I would use the language I have. When we look at this, don't think, okay, so God looks like Jasper and Ruby. He's just saying, of all the things that I can think that are just beautiful and incredible, it, it's this. Uh, last time we were coming home from Serapina's, and we saw this, the, just this white glow over whatever it was. And we were, Sally took a picture of it. It was like, well, how would we describe that? We would describe it with the language that we currently have. In the center, around the throne, were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like, was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face of a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered uh, with eyes all around, even under its wings. I know, it sounds kind of weird. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. So John, in his vision, John is seeing a throne room like he'd never seen before. And I don't know how many times John had been in and out of palaces at that point, but he saw a throne room like he'd never seen before. It was more ornate, it was more beautiful, it was more brightly lit, and he saw creatures like he'd never seen before. And he saw um, th these 24 thrones. These weren't, these weren't rickety, broken down, covered with duct tape thrones. These were thrones better than any throne he'd seen on earth filled with men better than any he'd seen on earth, with crowns more beautiful than any. But what was their job? Their whole job, and, and these weird creatures with the different animal heads and all that stuff, they had one purpose, and that was to talk about the holiness of God. <clears throat> and I promise you, they never got bored. They never got tired. And oh, man, holy, holy, holy. Can't we say something else about it? Just this one time, God. Because as they would pause, they would realize another. You are so holy. You are, you are so holy. Have you ever gotten yourself in a conversation with somebody where you're, you, there's just something they've done that has amazed you and you just can't get over it? Hopefully so. Hopefully it wasn't a bad thing. Because I know you can do that. Exodus chapter 34. Justice, goodness, 
and truth. And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their, children's, uh, and their children for the sin of the parents of the third and fourth generation. Okay, that's sometimes the part that we focus on. He punishes, he punishes. Look at the first thing he says. I am the Lord, the compassionate, the gracious. I am slow to anger. I am abounding with love and faithfulness. I'm maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. That's what God is. Yes, he does not leave the guilty and punished. But guess what? You and I were guilty, and he took that punishment on himself in the form of Jesus. So when we think about God, it's a mistake to only think about the holiness, the righteousness, the power, all this other stuff. We have to go ahead and throw in there goodness, love, and just the fact that he is truthful to us. To sum up, God is omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. Those are three words if you want to, it's actually, you just have to remember the last part. Okay, omni, what does omni mean? All. Omni. All. So God is all powerful, potent, omnipotent, all powerful. Isaiah 44, 24. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, who formed you in the womb. I am the Lord, the maker of all things, who stretches out the heavens, who spreads out the earth by itself. Okay, so <clears throat> um, there's some things in this room that I could move by myself. There are one or two things in this room I might need help with. God doesn't need help moving anything. <laughs> Never has God walked up and thought, man, I wish I had a couple of extra people to help me tote this. God has all power. All power is God's. Any power you see is on loan from God. He is omnipresent. Okay? He's all present. He is everywhere. Isaiah 66, 1. This is what the Lord says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool and everywhere else. I'm everywhere. I'm all places. There's nowhere you can go that I'm not. And there's nowhere I'm going to let you go that I'm not going to go with you. And then he's omniscient. He is all knowing. Psalm 147, 4 and 5. He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limits. Remember we said earlier that means the limits don't exist that I, that I have. And then in, the other one that I wanted to share is found in James 1.17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. God is good. He's good, and he loves us. The songs that Joseph led in worship this morning, there are several of them that just, you know, like, yes, God, you just, you're good, and you love us, and you want to carry us, and, and your plan for us is to succeed, not to fail. Your plan for us is to, is to love us, to not be out of fellowship with us, but to be in the fellowship with us. So this morning, as we draw this to a conclusion, man and God, men, I just want to talk to you. We cannot be the kind of men, we can't be the best we can be without a relationship with God. We can try to do it ourselves, we can try to pull ourselves up by the bootstraps, we can try to fix our own problems. None of that without God is going to be of any value. To be, the, to be the men we need to be, to be the workers we need to be, to be the husbands, the fathers, the sons. We cannot do that without having a relationship with God. It's kind of a, it's, God is the ultimate power tool. I don't know how many of you men 